So what you are seeing now is basically in a university, uh, a lab studying uh, wave motion. So wave motion is uh, a very practical thing to study because um, you can uh, talk about tsunami, energy transfer, so on and so forth. So this is basically a very big water tank. Uh, what it has is that in front here, you will have what you call a damper. Basically, it's just a lot moving up and down or forward and back. Depends on what kind of wave you want to generate. So while generating this, the wave will travel along the tank and then it will bounce back from this end. Uh, ideally, it should be infinite so you can let the wave keep on going. But in this case, the wave will actually hit this uh, uh, end and then it will be flat back. And uh, when that happens, uh, the wave will either cancel each other or they amplify each other. So it will come into a very interesting uh, formation. And uh, from this very interesting formation, we can actually represent wave in an other different manner, which is called wave front, F-R-O-N-T. So uh, I will let you see the video first. So I think now they are starting to generate wave and we can see here the disturbance is coming. So they are going to increase the amplitude so that you can see the wave clearly as you can see down here. They are coming now from inside the, the screen to outside. So now it is setting up. I think it's in sync now. So you can see a very nice wave. They are amplifying one another and cancelling out one another at the same time. So what you can see here is that this wave, you can of course draw it this way, 3D, like this. Uh, let me try and uh, screen cap that. And uh, of course you can do this. And then you can uh, uh, like this. You can show a wave like that. And then of course this is the undisturbed line. So it appears 3D. But uh, it will be very, very challenging to draw this 3D wave uh, because it is moving and all that. So what scientists did is that instead of drawing uh, a wave in different perspective, they only focus on this line, the peak of the wave. So if you just draw the peak of the wave, it is much easier. So this, horizon uh, this uh, horizontal line that I'm drawing here, this one, basically it will tell you where the crest of each wave is, meaning that from here, I can actually measure the wavelength. I can also from this diagram know that my wave motion is traveling in this direction. So it is very useful to just use this horizontal line to represent a wave rather than drawing this on the side. So this horizontal line that we are drawing is actually what we call a wave front. Okay, and a wavefront basically tells you a few uh, parameters of the wave. For example, is wavelength, which is measured by the gap. So down here, how many waves are there? It will be one wave because one wave is considered from peak to peak. So it's just nice. So the gap between two wavefront will be one wave, two wave, three wave, four wave, right? If, if if this is an this is another peak of the thing like if yeah so basically a uh, wave run can tell you can uh, let you count the number of waves it can also allow you to measure the wavelength and at the same time it can tell you the direction of the wave motion okay so let's uh continue watching the video so you'll be like that so this uh, bouncy wave that you are seeing is actually being formed by sending wave here and then when a reflected wave bounce back at exactly the same phase, uh, you can look up the word phase of wave uh, in your textbook, uh, but I don't think it is in your syllabus. Okay, so when that happens, uh, the wave, uh, the peak will amplify each other and then the trope will also uh, amplify each other. That's why you will be, it will become like a very obvious peak and a very obvious uh, minimum. So down here you will see like that. Eventually it will move. Uh, so they are bouncing, bouncing, they are getting the same. Yeah, so it's very nice. Yeah.
So you notice that uh, the shape here is where the the wet mark of, of on the wall. So you can see that actually they are bouncing very nicely at the same place. So this line and this line forms a wave front very obviously. So like I said, wave front is also like your displacement position graph. It is frozen in time. So uh, for today's lesson, we are going to focus on how Wavefront will enable us to answer some question. And uh, for Wavefront, right, it is very convenient to actually use Wavefront to uh, to illustrate how wave reflect and refract. Yep, uh, that is what you learn in light, right? So for water wave, it can also reflect. It can also be refracted. So reflection and refraction are common phenomenon across all waves. So in some case, there could be total internal reflection as well. Okay, so uh, we are going to look into your worksheet and then uh, we are going to use those uh, worksheet to uh, help you understand wavefront. Okay, so let's take out your worksheet now. Okay, so um, please take out your worksheet 13.3 and uh, we are going to use this worksheet to actually uh, apply our understanding of all the three um, representation of wave. Uh, we are going to focus on wave front for this worksheet. So uh, if you look at 13.3, the first question, they will give you this series of line. So uh, the series of line will not tell you whether it's transverse or longitudinal, but it will tell you that that line basically represent the peaks along a, a wave. So how do you imagine that? Um, you can imagine it as a 3D wave that is uh, like that. So let me draw the thing. So like a cloth, like that, and then like this. Yeah, so it is like a, a, a piece of cloth. Yeah, so what, what is wave front down here? Yeah, because your wave exists in 3D, it is not a singular line. Yeah, so it will be a continuous thingy like that. And then it will be like that. You see? Yeah? So you have to imagine it that way. So if you look at it from the very top, then it will appear as just lines like what you are seeing it here. So down here we have a few measurement, two and three. Uh be careful, this tree, right? It's just the width of the wave. So um for example, it will be uh like this. So your your this thing, your this tree represent the width, but the the width of wave is actually irrelevant to most of our question. So basically, this tree is just a distraction. Okay, so for here, this guy is basically a distraction. Okay, it is not the amplitude or anything. It doesn't tell us any usable information but this 2cm here is quite useful because it tells you the distance between peaks and peaks so down here how many waves are there one two or three yeah so down here there are actually two waves two complete waves and for two complete waves you have a width of 2cm so what does it mean in terms of wavelength so wavelength for one wave would be 2cm divided by 2 wave. So in this case, 1cm. Yep. Sorry, I just had lunch. So I have that thingy. Okay, how about question 2? How many waves are there and what is the wavelength? So we want to know is 9cm divided by how many complete waves? So I want you to count. Okay, it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you would have 9 divided by 6, which is 3 over 2, 1.5. Okay, so that is your wavelength. And down here, they say that for the wavefront, 
So this way, this way front, if I unfreeze the time, this peak will actually move to the front and it move, 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 right? Like an animation that you see from the earlier video. So it says that this wave front actually takes nine seconds to reach here, position Q, right? And then they want to know the speed of the wave. So just uh, recall, uh, what is speed? Speed is basically the distance covered by the crest divided by unit time or speed can also be uh, given by f times lambda, right? So since in this case, uh, the frequency it is, uh, well, can you find the frequency? You can, right, actually. Can you? Yeah, because down here you will see that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? If you want to find the speed using f lambda, we already know f, uh, v is the speed by the way, okay? Just to recap for those who didn't know. So frequency we do not know, but we know the wavelength which we have found. So down here, what we know is that uh, for three seconds, for three seconds, we are able to produce six wave. And uh, frequency is basically the number of wave produced by, uh, produced within one second, right? So within one second, I would have produced two wave. So I know that my frequency here would be two hertz. And I would know that the speed would be three meter per second. So this is one approach, right? How about another approach? Can I find the speed using the simple formula of distance over time? Yes, we can measure the speed of the wave by measuring how fast the crest actually move along a certain distance. So in this case, the crest has actually moved 9 cm uh, within a time of 3 seconds. So with that, I would know that my speed of wave is 3 meter per second. So as you can see, it agrees. Yeah. So down here, what is the frequency of the wave? I think I would have mentioned it already. Another way of doing it is that if you use this approach for your part B, then you can re reverse engineer and do this. And you know that now your speed is 3. You do not know what is your frequency and you know your wavelength, which is 1.5 you can also find your frequency is equals to 2 hertz. So there are many different ways of uh, calculating uh, wave questions. So just remember the speed of wave is either given by V equals to F lambda or you can also measure the speed of wave by looking at how fast the crest has traveled. Yeah. Okay, so question 3, we have uh, a 3D representation of a wave. Uh, you are supposed to state what is the wave front. Please go and look for the definition in your textbook. I'm not going to give it to you. Do not Google because uh, in uh, Google, uh, some of the keyword that Cambridge is looking out for is not there. So always refer to the textbook. So now I have to mark on the figure uh, the wave front of a wave and label it W. So I think uh, it is not just marked on the figure. You have to draw it. So these are the peaks of adjacent wave. So just draw a line with a ruler. One, two, three, four. Yep. Wave. One, two, three, four. Wave front. One, two, three, four. Wave front. So I need to label it with W, 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 and W. And now I have to show the wavelength. So to draw the wavelength, make sure it is perpendicular and then label it with arrow from where to where. So this is your lambda okay so key point over here okay you have to show the uh, perpendicular sign and then you also need to use double arrow to show it is measure from where to where okay this is whenever you need to label things on your diagram it has to be specific okay for question four uh, you will see water going through a change of depth, right? Down here it is deep, down here is shallow. Okay, down here there is a new content you need to know. Okay, the new content is that uh, you do not need to know the explanation, but you need to know its behavior. That is your speed of water wave. versus the depth. There's a relationship to it. 
So if the depth is deep, then the speed will be fast. And if the depth is shallow, then it will be slow. So uh, you don't need to know why, but you need to know this relationship. So how do I remember it without knowing why? Just remember, share low, it will be slow, okay? And then if it's deep, it's fast, yeah? Now, uh, if uh, in shallow water, it is slow, it means that down here, your speed V will be small, but down here, the V will be huge. And we know that the speed of wave is given by this formula, V equals to F lambda. Uh, just remember that in this case, the frequency here will stay constant uh, because the wave, the frequency of the disturbance depends on the frequency of the source of disturbance. So even when the wave travel into shallow water, the speed slow down, but the frequency is the same. So in order for, uh, for the speed to slow down, it means that your wavelength must have changed. As you can see in this diagram, in the deeper water, this is one wavelength, but in the shallow water, this is one wavelength. So you can see the drop in the wavelength. So in this case, you need to know this new content before you can answer this question. So in this case, the wavelength decreased because the speed has dropped and uh, the frequency actually remains constant. Only the speed drops. Okay. Okay. For question five, it is your reflection because this is a plane surface so you would expect reflection to happen and uh, reflection to happen it means that your speed is actually the same it won't change and if the speed doesn't change it means your wavelength and your frequency will not change just remember most of the time your frequency is constant so in this case if speed is the same frequency is the same wavelength must be the same so down here, if you are asked to draw, uh, for wave run is a bit more tricky. So you go here, then uh, make sure you draw the normal, measure the same angle, and then draw this. So this blue line is the direction of wave. Once you draw the direction of wave, it will be easy. Maintain this interval because that is your wavelength. So draw like that, like this. Why? Because in this case, once you enter here, it will be like that. Then after that, like that, like that, like that. Just remember to maintain the wavelength and, uh, and the wave front can join. Okay, you can join the wave front. Okay, the, the key thing is maintain the gap if the speed doesn't change. So this one, just remember when you are drawing your wave front, your wave front, maintain the gap, maintain the width of the gap if speed is not changed. Okay, so this is basically your reflection. Yeah, let's move on to question six. So for question six, you can see that the wave front actually bends. So in this case, basically it's your refraction. And uh, if you can recall, refraction is caused by a change of speed. So in this case, we are not dealing with light. We are dealing with water wave. So water wave, will there be a change of speed? Yes, we have just learned, right? For water wave, the speed of water wave actually depends on depth. Right, and we know that uh, the deeper it is, the fastest your speed actually uh, speed of water wave is. So we also know from our new content that if we have deep region, we would have high V, high speed. And I know that the second point F is constant. Yeah. Uh, even if the depth change, right? So what can we form when we have these two pieces of knowledge? We also know that V is equals to F lambda. So if F is constant and that V become 
pi, it means that my lambda would become pi, right? So in this case, it means that deep region will have high speed, high velocity. It means also that your lambda will be high and your lambda is actually represented by the gap between your wavefront, right? So if I have this content knowledge, then in this figure, which is the region that is deeper, A or B? Deep region, high speed, because F is constant, we would know that your lambda is high, your wavelength is high, and wavelength is given by the gap, right? So obviously, region A has a larger gap. Larger gap means larger wavelength, and hence we know that region A is actually deeper, right? And let's see if it agrees with our understand general understanding of refraction. So we know that your wave direction is given by the wavefront perpendicular to it. So this is how your wave move, right? Because I can measure the perpendicular direction, perpendicular to the wavefront. Down here, once I cross the region, I will measure the perpendicular distance, a perpendicular direction against this red dot, right? So if I do that with a ruler, then the perpendicular distance will be a uh, perpendicular direction will be this. Right? So you can actually tell the direction of wave motion by the wave front. You just form a perpendicular line. So if I look at this and if I draw the normal, this is my boundary, right? This is my boundary. This is my boundary. And I can draw a normal to it. So this is my normal. So you can see that the wave, this, this blue line, right? If I don't have any refraction, this is my original path. So now we can see that our wave actually bend towards our normal, right? So down, oops. So down here, you can actually see that like that. So the new wave bend towards the normal. So in light, when light bend towards the normal, it means slowing down or speeding up. It means slowing down, right? When light bend towards the normal, it means that the speed of light has actually slowed down when it enter into a optically denser medium or into a medium with a higher index. And true enough, just now we say that region A is the deeper region and it is of a higher speed because deeper region and this one lower uh, a shallow region so it is low speed and it agree with our general understanding of refraction when wave slow down it will bend towards the normal so it agrees it checks out yeah so from this question you can actually uh, see how refraction and wave front actually can lead to the same conclusion they agree with each other okay so now let's uh, deal with the uh, a and b so i were to find the frequency of a uh, water wave uh, and i know that the speed of wave in a is given so if i look at a i can uh, actually tell that my wave length is 10 cm so I, I can make use of this formula so remember in all your presentation you must always state the equation that you are using first and then you do a proper substitution so in this case is cm per second i want to know the frequency i know the uh, wavelength is uh, 10 cm now in your normal working you do not need to show me the unit but down here i just want to show you uh, why is it that i don't need to convert it to meter because both sides are cm cm so this cm will cancel each other so when that happened my f will become just 20 over 10 right i bring the 10 over to the other side and in terms of unit the cm cancel each other and i'm left with 1 over s and 1 over s basically is my hertz 
So you can see that I don't need to uh, do one step to convert both into meter. But if you do, it's fine. It's okay. So in this case, my answer would be 2 hertz and uh, 2 SF. In your theory paper, always change everything to 2 SF. Not 3, uh, 2. Okay. Then with this, I were, I'm asked to find the speed of wave in B. So in B, the only piece of information I have is this 6.3 and it is the wavelength. So normally for a good presentation, I will just write it down. My uh, wavelength in B is equals to 6.3 cm. So I know that my frequency of B is the same as frequency of A, which is 2.0 hertz. So in this case, I were to find my speed, I need to use the formula V equals F lambda. So always, always, always show the formula. So once I have this, I would have V of B given by 2 times 6.3. So notice that when I write this, I no longer write down cm and hertz because I don't need to. Okay. Uh, down here, I'm just showing you, like I said. So again, I would have... Uh, if I do this, I will have uh, 12.6, round it up to 2SF. So what is the unit? So this, if you are you are already good in it, then you don't need to uh, do this. You can do this, uh, you can do this uh, mentally. So for this two is uh, two hertz, which is one over seconds. 6.3 is CM. So CM times one over seconds, you will get CM per second, it's fine. Okay, or if you like to leave everything to SI unit, you can change it to 0 0.13 meter per second. It's the same. Can? Okay, last question. Is it last? Yeah, I think it's last. Uh, again, I have a water wave moving from deep to shallow water, so I would expect a change of direction. Right? So, uh, how do I do this? Uh, let's see what do they want. Um, I have a piece of information saying that it takes eight seconds to travel from x to y so from here to here it takes 3 cm uh, it takes a exact 0.8 seconds so very easy how do i find the the speed right well, the speed is also given by how fast my uh my crest move from one point to another right so in this case i will not use a uh, v equals to f lambda i can directly use this then uh, distance is 3 cm I spend 0 0.80 seconds, I will get the answer as 3.75, which I will round it up to 3.8 uh, cm per second to SF. Notice that whenever I do my working, I will show the full form and then I will round it up to 2 SF. And I expect you to do the same. So for the guys who want to be yourself, if in your homework now i cannot make you redo but it is not a good practice for you to take shortcuts okay you can take shortcuts in exam but in your daily work do what i teach you okay so that it will internalize to become a very good mental health habit for you okay what if you do not like this you are the type that hey i want one formula to solve all my problem can i do that yes Teacher teach you speed of wave is given by V equals to F lambda. Uh, now you have a problem with F, you don't know what is it, but the lambda you can find out is this 3 cm divided by how many waves? Between X and Y, how many waves are there? 1, 2, and 3. So you get this. So what is frequency? Well, you are taking 0 0.80 to generate 3 waves. So 0 0.80 seconds to generate three wave so in one seconds how much wave is generated it will be three divided by 0 0.80 okay which is equals to something so this one i will just leave it there then down here i'll just suck the whole thing in right this become one right three divided by three so now i press my calculator I will get back 3.75, <clears throat> You will arrive at the same thing. Yeah, so both approach will be okay. Then after that, I need to sketch. Sketch means I don't need to be uh, 
it's not to scale but i need to show the basic understanding uh, of refraction because it is passing into a shallow region so what do i do well i know that my wave is approaching the boundary this way why is it that i know it's this way and not this way or not this way because i know that my wave motion is perpendicular to the wave front so i will first draw my uh, line using a ruler so let me do this with a ruler so here <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, the screen is detecting too many fingers. So let me try again. There you go. Wait. Wait. Wow, really hard with a ruler. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. I am going to draw with uh my fabulous free hand. Okay. Uh it will be like this. okay like that so i will draw the wave motion first so this blue line represent the motion i'm not answering the question yet uh, because i have to draw wave front uh. so i will draw this then uh, i will use a normal to help me so i will dot a normal and uh, i know that when when it is in deep water it is a uh, high speed and when it go into shallow water, it is low speed. So if it is low speed, it will bend towards the normal. So I just sketch like that towards the normal. This is my wave motion. Right. And I also know that once it enter a low speed, my uh, gap between the wave front will also be smaller. Right. So this wave front this one I will focus on this because it is crossing my boundary so how do I draw this I would need to extend this line to the back so that I can measure it properly then I will uh, use a ruler to measure from here make sure this is perpendicular and measure like that so this is my new wave front perpendicular to this blue line right then this wave front once it go into my new boundary it will change direction so i must measure perpendicular to the highlighted blue line so when i do that this will be perpendicular right and now since i have two line i can actually measure the gap between these two right this gap once i measure this gap let's call it the new lambda i would i can then measure here new lambda and then i can draw another line like that make sure it is perpendicular and then i will keep on drawing maybe i draw four i guess yeah then i will get a new I will be able to sketch the refracted wave front. Okay? So down here I will stop and uh, your homework your homework is to try out your 13.4 finish everything. Okay?